Yeah, I get questions all the time, whether I'm at a seminar, at a fishing tournament, uh, through social media, emails, whatever. Uh, and the question is, where should I go and what should I use? And to me, in bass fishing, that's like an impossible answer because every moment, every day, all the time on every body of water, there's something different. Yes, there are times that you can key in on one bait and one style and one location and wreck them. But the reality is bass can live from the top of the water column, you know, eating top waters all the way to the bottom and 40, 50 foot of water, uh, eating crawfish imitation baits. So you just have to be very versatile and be willing to catch bass from the top to the bottom. Today's episode of the Fisherman's Handbook is dedicated to demonstrating how bass set up in different sections of the water column. From top to bottom, bass can be positioned in a variety of areas. Host Wade Middleton starts the show by going back to his roots and doing a little pond fishing. When the conditions set up right and the bass are feeding, a topwater frog sure can be a great presentation. That's so fun. That is so fun. Pond fishing never gets old. No matter how big or small they are. That guy jumped all over that little Spro Junior Frog. <laughs> Go back and grow up. You know, for years, that's all I like to do as a little kid. I'd go everywhere I could to go pond fishing. Sneak in, climb fences, places I didn't have permission, it didn't matter. I just wanted to go. Now as I've gotten older, I still love to pond fish just as much. I'm literally out. It's deer season and we're doing some deer hunting in the middle of the day. Grabbed the fishing rods, drove down here and started spending some time. You know, as soon as I drive into a place, I'm always looking for a pond. You know, when I start looking at, at baits to throw in a specific area, uh, there are definitely some baits that will not work in certain situations and conditions. You know, you look at a topwater bite uh, in, a, in a pond that's choked full of vegetation. Uh, you've got to get something either into the holes or something over the top of it. And in those situations, uh, reeling a big deep diving crankbait, it's just not gonna work. It's gonna bile up before you get two cranks and be ineffective. But there are baits that will help you catch fish in those situations. I think it's bite it. Got it! <laughs> All right, both of the last two bites have come sitting still. You know, you still gotta, even though you're fishing in a pond, you kind of got to determine how they want to bite it. This guy here is covered up in grass. Well, that happens a lot in ponds, you know, especially late in the year. We're actually in October when I'm shooting this right now. And, you know, you're at the end of the summer, basically warm weather. Lots of grass will grow and, you know, a hollow body frog or a popping frog or something along those lines will really pay off because you can fish the edges of the pond as you're seeing me do here. You know, other times of the year, or other spots on the pond, you know, I may be able to throw no worm around that those lay downs over there when we get over there. But right now, I hadn't had to take more than a couple of steps and let my junior frog by Spro just kind of sit there. That there just looked like a bobber going under. It just disappeared. That is a picture perfect spot to catch a pond bass. Back into the little cove, you can kind of see the pond weed sitting there. Took me three casts, but you can almost call your shot to catch one right there. Great deadly combination. 12 to 14 inch bass in a pond. Pro frog with all the vegetation. That's the junior model. Some braided line, which I think would be a must, a high speed reel, and you're gonna have some success. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the sound of drag, the sound of braid. It never gets old. He's been caught before. A couple of times. Awesome. You don't have to sometimes have the biggest, fastest boat and best gear to have a good day catching fish. They sure help in a lot of situations that I love to go do. But you can never forget the simple fishing like this. Coming up on the Fisherman's Handbook, we continue to break down the different sections of the water column. Next, we'll take a look at fishing the bottom and share some real secrets on how to catch bass offshore. As people who love the outdoors, we know what we stand for. We stand for fish, wildlife, and conserving the places they call home. We stand for the traditions we inherited and that we must pass on. We stand for great gear, fair prices, expert service, and memorable experiences. At Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's, we stand together for you. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z Series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin. Fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Is that not fish right there? I think so. That'd be right there. When it comes to catching fish on the bottom, it's, it's the old proverbial needle in a haystack looking type deal, which a lot of people don't like. They just assume be throwing out a target on the bank. And I have to admit, I'm kind of one of those guys, but I know at certain times and certain conditions, I've got to go look for that needle. I've got to find that needle out there somewhere that's holding those fish. And when you start looking at finding offshore fish, there's a few things you always want to keep in mind. You want to find some structure that's going to hold those fish. Uh, can you find them just roaming around out there? Yes, but generally those fish are relating to bait fish. So if you're finding something uh, that's going to hold fish where they're actually just sitting up there and they're not roaming, uh, you want to find structure, and by structure it could be uh, different types of broken rock, it could be uh, small rock, big rock, it could be a, something that's sunk, you know, brush pile, uh, it could be old stumps, old trees, uh, grass line. I mean, there's always something out there that's going to hold those fish. Good one? I don't know. Feels oh, like it. Yeah. yeah, it's a freaking giant. <laughs> he looks like... <laughs> Pretty good one. Three pounder. Thought he was a lot bigger. He, I did too when he come up. He cracked it. Oh, he is. He's oh, four yeah, pounder. He's three. <laughs> There's your old lead shaker fish you talk about all the time on the bottom. There's no other cover up on the bank for these fish to be on. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. It's a good fish right there. That's a fun bite right there. I felt that rock. Just dragging that right along there and funk. Kind of like what you was expecting, wasn't it? When you start looking at finding offshore fish and setting up on them, um, I love to find bait in a location. 
and not always can you find bait. You know, if they're eating a crawdad, I've yet to find a bunch of crawfish showing up on my sonar out there that I know they're there. So in those situations, you're looking for the fish themselves set up in a good fish holding structure. Uh, whether you're using traditional side, clear, live scope, whatever it may be, you're looking for some return that shows a sign of life down there in a situation that the fish are set up to where you can catch them. Um, like a broken rock, you know, you, if you're throwing a, a, a crankbait or a, a big lead shaker type bait with soft plastic on it and you're pulling it across there and all of a sudden you feel rough stuff. I mean, that's like, you go on point and guys like Creed will talk about, I'm just gonna leave it there for a second and barely move it and try to get that bite where other guys will keep it moving. It's just how you're gonna trigger that bite. I was moving that sucker. I seen that. <laughs> Couldn't catch up with him. I had to knock you out of the way. I hated to. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you did. I was reeling and going the whole time on him. Uh, I mean, just on the bottom. Yep. Sometimes fish are in the top, sometimes they're on the bottom, sometimes they're in between based on the cover and the situation. What you gotta do? I got lucky there. You know, for me, the reason you wanna fish the bottom is simply because the fish are not up in the water column. I mean, you're idling around, you're looking at your graph and seeing where the fish are. And they're gonna be, they're either gonna be where the bait is at or somewhere that they wanna live like something that they like to set around some type of cover, whether it's a rock sticking up off bottom, or it's a stump or a lay down or whatever it is. I mean, you take just a little rock that's sticking up, you know, that high off the ground, the fish will just sit right there beside it. It's, for one, it feels like cover for him. For two, it's like an ambush spot. Shed or something, crawdad comes by that rock, he just jumps out there and snatches it and he's got an easy meal. There's one. He's coming up quick. Another good one. He is. Well, look, he just. He just. He quit. He's cold. He give up. <laughs> he's cold. Look right there. You see where that fish is hooked? Yeah. Right, right in the top, top of the mouth. mouth. Right where you want him. What is wrong with him? He's like, oh man, I just tired. I was taking a nap and that crawfish came swimming by. <laughs> I mean, he didn't do nothing. No. He never kicked or nothing. <laughs> he kicked hard when he bit, though. Man, I mean, right where you want to hook them. Right where you want to hook them every time. That's a good fish. <laughs> all these fish, all these good fish are good. And they're all right there on the bottom. You talk about fish, you know, windy fish up on top, top water, windy fish down on the bottom. That's right. You know, and there's experience that can guide you to that. The conditions, you know, we've we cranked the dam, we flipped docks, you know. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we hadn't done was Deep, use the deep. sonar and folks finally we did and, yep you know that's the might be the ticket for the day now here in a little while we may be shallow and catching them on a crankbait time for another break but when we return we continue to look at catching fish on the bottom when you're able to dial in the right location with the right bait the bites will begin to show up in a hurry You sons of fishes. Ain't enough fish on this lake for two clubs. Really? Well, we see plenty of fish live with pan optics. Yep. Dang! We should get pan optics. Maybe we'll just take yours. What's going on here? You boys have license? Yes, yes sir. sir. Nope. There he is. Oh, I got him. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating which line. I choose the simple side. My choice of line is sunline. And my favorite lines to use is sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled trout, know, sharks. There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. I got my power pole down Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake Sitting so still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down
The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Engel, the original high-performance cooler. Today we've been showing you different ways to get bites in different parts of the water column. Now we'll continue to take a look at fishing along the bottom. But once you've picked a location, how do you know what bait to throw? You know, I let time of year, water clarity, weather kind of dictate what I'm going to do. I mean, I I'm consider myself more or less a power fisherman. I like to move a lot. Um, I like throwing spinner baits. I like throwing top waters. And I think that's why I like throwing the big lead shaker and football jigs a lot. Dang fish, come over there and grab that. Ate it right Golly. off the bottom. <laughs> did you see that? I did. <laughs> I was hung up trying to get my jig unhung, just sitting there bouncing. When it come off, he smoked it. He'd been sitting there looking at it the whole time, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> Thinking about eating it. <laughs> that thing came unhooked and whack! <laughs> <laughs> you talking about a shocker. <laughs> it didn't take you long to, to set the hook on him once no, you knew what happened. <laughs> That's like a flipping bite down there. Oh man. That's a good one there. Good fat, healthy fish. <laughs> Secret Lures right. MVP football G. <laughs> MVP football jig. This is the Missouri Crawl. Really like that color. That peanut butter and jelly. This one just has a little bit of chartreuse in it. But the neat thing about this head, the neatest to me, is that pivot divot head right there. And it just makes that bait crawl across that bottom. You can feel it a lot better and it makes this bait stand up. See how that hook stands up in the air right there? does the same thing on the bottom. Makes it so much easier when that fish sucks that bait in. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna hook him right in the top of the mouth, which is where you wanna hook him. You know, for colors, I mean, to me, a lot of it's personal preference. If you're throwing something you don't have confidence in, you're not gonna fish it near as good. Um, sometimes colors do matter. I mean, you want something that definitely kind of shows up in the water. And more stained water, dirtier water, I like a darker color. Um, you know, sometimes that might be black and blue. This water's a little bit stained right here and I'm throwing a Missouri Crawl. And the main reason I went to this Missouri Crawl, and there's not a lot of it, you can see. It's not a lot of chartreuse, but it is a little bit. And sometimes I might even take my, whatever plastic I'm putting on here and I might dip them chartreuse or early in the spring, late winter, early spring, sometimes I'll dip them orange. And I might throw a skirt that's got some orange in it. A lot of it's personal preference. I mean, you just kind of kind of match it to the watercolor you got, and something definitely that you have confidence in. Yep. There's one. Well, what do we have? Football jig got him one. <laughs> he hadn't showed himself yet. He's in a little bit there. Yeah, he is. Oh yeah. Mm, I like it when they do that. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they be get their head out of the water. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, good one. <laughs> <laughs> like little kids. Oh, we are. <laughs> On the bottom. That'd be a good one. Boy, too. sucker. Look at him pulling. Just pulling down. Strong. Feeling that old dead and that rocky just thump, thump, thump. And then all of a sudden the real thump hits. Another good solid fish. Well, he took it down, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He ate that thing. But you know, that's the neat thing about this, the Secret Lures football jig. It's that pivot divot head, yeah. is what it's called. It makes that bait set up off the bottom, like it'll make the hook set up yeah. off the bottom. And it's so much easier to get a hook in the mouth. You could see I had that fish hooked yeah. in the top of the mouth, and he was down deep, but. Perfect. 
it makes a big difference on hooking fish. Yeah, and I think it also helps keep you in contact with some of those rocks sometimes. Instead of just over the top, it just kind of digs in and rolls. Up it's there. amazing how much more you feel with it, because I've thrown a bunch of different football jigs. And feeling the difference in wet drags across the bottom, the biggest thing I noticed with it was on the ledge shaker. When I was taking it out and throwing it around and just how much you could feel, it just felt like, right. it almost felt like a crankbait digging in the bottom. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference. huge difference. And I think it makes a difference in the way that bait's acting, you know, acting, jumping across the bottom. It's not just sliding across the bottom, it's actually, yeah, you know, moving like a crawdad. Crawdad, throwing up little dust, dust bells, yep. you know, or mud balls for lack of a better Absolutely. word. Yep. Yeah. And next on the Fisherman's Handbook, we wrap up this episode of Catching Bass from Top to Bottom. Stay tuned for more great information when we return. Little head shaker, little head shaker. on the lead shaker. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> this tube is the greatest thing in the world. When you're catching fish on it, it builds your confidence. To me, that's the most important part of bass fishing, is you have to have confidence in this bait when we're throwing it. I've had guys say, you fish like you believe there's a fish there. Well, I do. I'm feeling everything that I can feel with that bait. If you need to get bites, it'll just absolutely get bit. Approximately 30,000 cases of Lyme disease happen each year in the United States. The main culprit, ticks. Stop and kill ticks in the outdoors with Sawyer's permethrin insect repellents. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Here at Big Bite Baits, we've got a big line of different plastics and you know, they're all a tool, so you wanna have them with you all the time. I made several checks in crowded areas, flipping that right there. Just a six inch Big Bite Crete tail worm. Here at Big Bite, we came out with four brand new colors this year. All four of these colors are going to be great fish catching baits. Definitely my number one go-to bait that Big Bite has out right now is the Big Bite Battle Bug. Big Bite is leading the way when it comes to innovation and colors. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. Spro, sports professionals. And by Gill, dress like a pro. Stay with him. Got him. Might be a little better one. Little head shaker. Little head shaker. On the lead shaker. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Come here, buddy. I like it. Just something about getting bit on the bottom. Yep. <laughs> it's just always fun. Big worms, uh, finesse baits, whatever it may be when they're offshore, the trigger that bite. Uh, when they're on the bottom and they're setting up on structure like that and you find a school of them, you're that guy that can win the tournament right there in five casts. You can beat your buddies up if you've got the right presentation and they don't have a bait that can get down there to it. Or you can just have an absolute bass uh, catching fish. I mean, when you find fish on the bottom and you've dialed in the retrieve and the bait and the color, and the cadence, so to speak, that they want, you're absolutely gonna have a phenomenal fishing trip. Little better? I think so. Nah. Boy, I don't know. He's a pretty good one. <laughs> he's not bad. Nah. And boy, I mean, oh. he, he, <laughs> Come on, <everybody. laughs> broken record, but it's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he hit it and took it away from me and said, hey, you going to catch me? <laughs> wow, that's so fun. Thanks for watching this episode of the Fisherman's Handbook. This has been a Caraco TV production. Many said that we were just obsessed when we started, that there had to be an easier way to smoke food. 
As time passed, the Bradley family created a lineup of Bradley electric smokers that has made it easier for the novice or even expert chef to get perfect results every time they use it. Grab yourself a Bradley smoker and take your cooking to an all new level. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. Mirage Drive kayaks set the standard for fun on the water. Whether your passion is fishing, sailing, or recreational adventure, Hobie's got a kayak for you. Hobie's Mirage Drive mimics nature's proven designs for efficient and powerful propulsion and enhances your kayaking experience. Mirage Power, Mirage Performance, Mirage Drive. Hobie, enjoy the ride. Tired of forgetting to set a recording or missing the latest episode of your favorite outdoor show? Check out Outdoor Action Today. Never miss a second of shows like Americana Outdoors, Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook, and Whitetail Diaries. All of this at the press of a button without a subscription fee required. Start watching your favorite shows when you want to watch them by going to OutdoorAction.com or through the Outdoor Action channel on any Roku device. Mm -hmm. 